Hello and welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's garbage people and all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica, and I am your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. Hi, 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 babies. Hi, trash cans. Hi, hi baby trash cans. How are you? Mm, are you doing good, trash cans? We hope so. Mama loves you. We love you. <laughs> if you didn't tune into our last episode, we named our fans Trash Cans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And have gotten some pretty good feedback about it. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Did we get feedback about anything else? No. Which is surprising. Not about whether or not men could come without being hard. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Could could men not wait to DM us? <laughs> I mean, it's our fault. I By ours, I mean me, because I wouldn't fucking drop it. But like... <laughs> we uh, opened the floodgates of DMs. <laughs> I just feel... I kind of just feel bad that you had to be the one to receive them. <laughs> like, you really had to like, you know, if I was the horse in the parade, you had to shovel the shit. And I feel bad about that. <laughs> well, what shocked me was that people had various answers. Oh, wow. There wasn't a conclusion. I mean, frankly, like, I know we're poking fun, but I do appreciate, you know, that our male listeners came through and, you know, I, we... We asked a question and they answered it. I I do feel appreciative. And I'm also like, what? Multiple answers. You know what? Nothing nothing shocks me. Nothing. Why are you nothing trash this week? Me. Well, I had a very important financial responsibility that I had to take care of. And, and Los Angeles County listeners take heed. Mm. It is time if you have earned a single penny on 1099s. Mm. You need to apply for a business tax from the city of Los Angeles. And if you already have such a thing, it's time to do a business tax renewal. Okay. You have until March 1st to do so without a penalty. But I've seen people that have made, you know, 1500 there, 1600 here and there, owe taxes to the city because they didn't have this business license. And you can get a creative arts exemption which means that none of your acting work, Where it's a big deal. This? Where were you last year when I or when I was doing my taxes for 2020 and I actually needed that? Well, I say go to the City of Los Angeles website and do your business tax renewal before March 1st. Great. Good advice. Damn. That's why you're yeah. trash? No. Why oh. I'm trash is I was looking through my financial box, which is a fancy box on the outside. Mm -hmm. Like it's a display box. Mm-hmm. But on the inside, all of my important documents like hospital records, financials, 1099s, W-2s, everything is just kept in a Nike box. But you decorated it. But on the outside, it looks very nice. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so I thought, oh my God, if I die and somebody has to climb through or comb through my records, this is what they'll see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A Nike box. <laughs> is that, what do you think is the most embarrassing thing someone will find if you die without you being able to explain it? Oh my God. It's in my nightstand and it's not a vibrator. Okay. <laughs> like that's, that's all I'll say. I always feel like if I was to die in a car accident, which like knock on what I don't want that to happen at all. But I'm always like in my head being like, no one's going to be like, I have to be able to explain what was playing. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to the stupidest music. How are you trash this week? I'm the kind of person. And I, I guess I realize this more like when I have like a, a sig O, you know, that my, my boyfriend likes to drink beer and he likes to drink fancy ones. And I, I do too. So I want to try them all. And I don't like, I just found myself yesterday. He opened a new one and I wanted to try it. And I could have waited for him to pour it in a glass, try it himself, and then let me try. But instead, I snatched the can from him that was freshly opened and went to drink it, but it was freshly opened. So it was literally like exploding on my dress. Like, <laughs> but I just couldn't wait. Like, I'm a fucking child. 
So I'm still wearing that dress right now because we're recording very early in the morning and I just put it back on and um, I fucking, I reek like beer and it was all because I couldn't wait. Like, of course he's going to let me try it. Of, of course. course he is. I just have to wait. Like I, like I need like discipline. <laughs> Not from him. Never. But like, <laughs> <laughs> never from a fucking man. <laughs> I need, I need discipline for myself. So anyways, I'm gross. Well, you know who else needs some discipline, Kath? Who? The man in our first story. Okay. According to Insider.com, the London Zoo refuses to grant Ricky Gervais's dying wish of being eaten by lions. I'm a little confused by that segue, but I do hope you'll explain it. I love Ricky Gervais, but I find that he is sometimes problematic. Okay. And refuses to apologize. I agree with that sentiment, like front to back. I think you you summed it up perfectly because I feel the same. I'm like, oh, I really like him and I like some of his comedy. But other times I'm like, can you, can you? Anyways, on Conan O'Brien a couple weeks ago, Ricky Gervais told him that he wanted to give something back to the natural world after he dies because we as humans take everything from the world. So he thought that a good way for him to do that is for them to feed his body to the lions at the London Zoo. Catherine England, the zoo's chief operating officer, told The Sun last week that the zoo was struggling financially because of COVID-19 and would, quote, Welcome donations that keep us alive and keep our lions fed on a more suitable diet. Yes, but then the London Zoo said that Ricky Gervais might be a little too gristly for the lion's taste. Ooh, ooh, the shade. It is shade a lot of London shade. It a li- it's a lot of shade. <laughs> Gervais also said he liked the idea of two lions reenacting Lady and the Tramp with his testicles and would like the look on the tourist faces when they just throw a dead face. 73 year old to the lion ricky gervais is how old right now let me look this up okay so he's 59 so he thinks that he's gonna die in the next 14 years i mean anything can happen that's true r.i.p and i don't know that he takes that good of care of himself i don't know he may or he may not it's it's really you know he kind of feels like he's got like an oprah vibe where he like sometimes he's looking thinner and sometimes he's not Uh uh-huh uh-huh I hear that. Like, he might have a working weight versus a resting weight. By the way, RIP to Larry King. I feel like no one was talking about that on Instagram, which is fair. It's just that, obviously, like, when you asked me to do this podcast, the first thing I thought was, well, Larry King has inspired me to be a journalist. So, of course. RIP to the King. You know, I won a contest on a social media app, and Larry King interviewing me was part of the prize. Whoa. Well, (laughs) we didn't meet face-to-face or even audio-to-audio, but what he did is he sent in pre-recorded questions, and then I was supposed to answer them, and then they were going to mash it up together. And so I have a recording of Larry King saying, Erica, Erica, (laughs) (laughs) on my phone, and... And my boyfriend, I, you know, I was like, R.I.P. Larry King. And he kind of was like, oh, you were big king head? And I'm like, no, but you have to respect the institution of journalism that he was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm like, I'm shocked that like no one is saying anything. Although it's not like I'm like perusing Twitter being like, why is no one talking about Larry King? You know what? I was going to say, come over to Twitter. It's all Larry King talk. Is it? Okay, cool. Here, I thought I was like breaking new ground. (laughs) We were going to be leading the charge on the uh, Larry King Memorial. Speaking of leading the charge, let's get into our second story. Yes. According to the NewYorkPost.com, Columbia's cocaine hippos must be stopped. Okay. I, I pictured just instantly a super sweaty hippo wearing a Hawaiian shirt and just being like, we should write a screenplay together. When I hear cocaine hippo. Yeah, see, I picture a hippo who's also very sweaty. Its long hair is like kind of stuck to its face because it's been dancing and it's just looking for its phone. (laughs) (laughs) Where the hell my phone? Um, Pablo Escobar's infamous drug dealer, uh, his hippos are taking over the marshlands of Colombia and need to face the same fate as their late owner before they become impossible to control, scientists have warned. The so-called cocaine hippos were illegally imported to the country by the notorious drug lord 
who was shot to death by authorities in 1993, the Telegraph reported. But the rapidly breeding beasts have grown to become the largest invasive species on the planet and could reach dangerous numbers in the next two decades. Nobody likes the idea of shooting a hippo, but we have to accept that no other strategy is going to work. Ecologist Natalie Casablanca Martinez told the outlet. Castel Blanco. Castel Blanco. I don't know. Whatever. We should put like a super cut together someday. Just us saying people's names wrong. Oh, Um, God. (laughs) When Escobar was killed, the authorities took control of his 7,000 acre estate, which included a personal zoo. And while most of the animals found homes at other zoos, four of the hippos escaped. With no real predators, there are anywhere between 80 and 100 descendants of Escobar's former pets terrorizing the country's lakes and rivers, the Telegraph reported. I mean, that not that crazy how, like, just some, like, random illegal shit, or even, like, sometimes legal when you're talking about, like, the buffaloes on Catalina Island, where they just, like, you can change the whole ecosystem if you just put animals somewhere they're not supposed to be. Well, that's like pythons in Florida. Yes, It is, Erica. It is. And the parrots of Burbank. Invasive species, man. I, you know, I, I don't believe in a necessary, a higher power, but there is a reason why animals evolved where they evolved and shouldn't be some places. Sure. Scientists have projected the hippo population could surge to 1,500 by 2024. The hippos pose a threat to the natural wildlife since their urine and feces are toxic, potentially sickening other species and even humans. I know that life. (laughs) I had Indian food for dinner on Friday. I understand that life. I had Thai food last night. Oh, boy. These hippos have become part of the local identity, but time is running out, said David Ikaveri Lopez, a government environmentalist. They're kind of just afraid that their only option is to slaughter them. So relocation might have been possible 30 years ago when there was only four of them. Castration could have also been effective if officials had provided sufficient resources for the program early on. But a cull is now the only option. Man, that's wild. That's absolutely wild. I mean, should should big game hunting be allowed for hippos? I guess it's going to be. I mean, for you know, rich white men in uh, America are going to go nuts for that. Oh, my God. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, to control the population because they are an invasive species, I understand it. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of invasive species, <laughs> sometimes I feel like Gwyneth Paltrow in- invades my space. <laughs> Get her. Get her, Erica. Get her. She lives rent-free in my mind. I can't stop thinking about her. Mm -hmm. So this is another story from the New York Post. And there's also something on Facebook about it. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle. This this smells like my vagina. uh, Reportedly exploded in a UK woman's home. In a story that gives a new meaning to fire crotch, Gwyneth Mm. Paltrow's novelty candle explodes. So I have some... I've got some problems. Okay. Is there a video? Of the candle exploding? Not to my knowledge. Then I don't think it happened. <gasps> yeah. You're calling this UK woman, this anonymous UK woman, Judy Thompson, Jody Thompson, a liar? Yeah. I'm calling her a fucking liar. Well, like no one else has said that this is that this has happened. So why the why would hers? Well, she says that the candle exploded and emitted huge flames with bits flying everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. The whole thing was ablaze and it was too hot to touch. There was an inferno in the room, she told the media consultant for Kilbourne. Yep. I think it's fake. I think it's fucking fake. I think that she's a liar. I think her partner who she lives with, David Snow, is a fucking liar. I think that they they just wanted to get a story written about them. Wow. You think that they're that hungry for, for attention. Yeah. I think that Gwyneth Paltrow makes a damn good candle. I don't own one, but I'm t- <laughs> I'm taking goop side on this one and saying that, nope, that candle did not explode. You're just looking for attention, Jody. Hey, Jody, he's not coming back. <laughs> you got to make do with David Snow. <laughs> he's not going to come back, Jody. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's that's maybe wild. I'm, I'm just feeling like a brat. And I don't know. I just read that story. I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> wow. Well. You know who wasn't feeling like a brat? Oh, wow. Yeah, this next one's a doozy. Tell the people, Erica. According to NPR.org, 
a reputable news source. Yes. <laughs> we are journalists first and foremost. <laughs> A man allegedly hid from coronavirus and authorities in the Chicago airport for three months. This is fucking crazy. So a California man was arrested on Saturday and accused of hiding in a restricted area of Chicago O'Hare's International Airport for three months. The man told police that COVID-19 had rendered him too scared to travel home to California, so he hid in the airport, surviving on food provided by strangers. The United Airlines staff spotted 36-year-old Adida Singh and requested identification. They said he removed his mask and presented a badge which belongs to an airport operations manager who reported it missing last October, according to the Chicago Tribune. He faces felony charges of criminal trespass in a restricted area of an airport, as well as misdemeanor theft charges. Cook County Judge Susanna Ortiz set the bail at $1,000. Seems low. She also said that if he came up with the money, he would be prohibited from returning to the airport. That's a good idea. You are banned from Chicago. Yeah, good luck. Fucking huge international terminal, my dude. <sighs> Can't go to Chicago. Wow. I mean, that's just wild to me. This the story I don't believe is fake. No. Uh, NPR is a reputable news store, as you said. I do question his motive. You were so afraid of the coronavirus that you stayed in an airport? Like what go home. Go or go somewhere else in Chicago. Like this is this is beyond for me. I get California's numbers are pretty bad and have we've been leading the surge for quite some time, but this is kind of I mean, <laughs> I just don't understand his logic. Yeah, like I it's just confusing. Like, what was he doing in Chicago in the first place? And mm -hmm. like if this just happened, because I it like this story was put out on January 18th. So like we, we've been in COVID for like a hot minute. So he must not have been afraid of COVID on the way there. Right. But he seems to be re afraid of it returning. This is a little suspect. Judge Susanna Ortiz said, The court finds these facts and circumstances quite shocking for the alleged period of time that this occurred. Being in a secured part of the airport under a fake ID badge, allegedly, based upon the need for airports to be absolutely secure so that people feel safe to travel, I do find these alleged actions do make him a danger to the community. Yeah. Like, how the fuck were you able to hide in an airport for three months? I mean, this makes me think of that movie with Tom Hanks, Terminal. Was that Tom Hanks or was that George Clooney? No, it was Tom Hanks. You're right. You're right. You're right. I didn't I know my it. Hanks. I yeah, know my I Hanks. I know. I, I Honestly, that was one of the first things you ever said to me. I am Erica Curry, and I know my Hanks. I know my Hanks. <laughs> I didn't watch that movie. Is this what this is about? <laughs> so a man basically traveling in the midst of a, it's been a while since I've seen it. Maybe I don't know my Hanks that well. No, Erica, his, you do. his country ceases to exist, and oh. so his passport is essentially useless, and so he has to live in the airport because he doesn't have a valid means of identification moving forward. And it's like a big case and it's a whole thing. That seems like a stretch, but I think I'll believe it just because Tom Hanks is in it. Everyone says that's a good movie. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. he fall in love? Oh, probably. Again, it's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah. I think between this and the storming of the Capitol, <laughs> it's looking like Places that we just kind of assume are secure are Aren't that safe. not that safe. So. I mean, finding a fake ID badge, A, brilliant. <clears throat> sure. Or it's a real ID badge, but finding one and then using it as your fake ID. Also, how did he brilliant. get passengers to give him food? Wouldn't it set off anyone's – or is it just because airport rules are different that, like, when you see a homeless person in the airport, you don't think about it? You're like, well, yeah, fuck it. I mean, there's birds inside. So, of course, there's a you know, homeless person in here. Where did he shower? Uh, I don't know. I guess international terminals do have showers in the bathroom sometimes. What he needs is one of those lounge passes. Oh, baby. When you're Ooh. living lounge life. Yeah. Can't go back. Speaking of can't go back, let's get into our next story sent in by Victoria Jacobson and Katie Dahl. Thanks, girls. Thank you, ladies. You should check out Katie's podcast, Crying Behind Sunglasses. Yes. And you should check out Victoria's Instagram because she's. we were just talking about her before we started recording. And she's awesome and fucking stunning. <laughs> and stunning. Exclusive, according to Apple News. 
Gone Girl, Ana de Armas poster is thrown in the trash outside of Ben Affleck's LA home amid split after his children were seen playing with the life-size cutout last summer. <laughs> It was reported Monday that the actors have mutually and completely amicably decided to end their relationship. She broke it off. Their relationship was complicated, another source told People. The report claims that Anna doesn't want to be based in L.A. And Ben Affleck has to remain based in L.A. for his three kids with his ex-wife, Jennifer Gardner. Will Dunkin' Donuts survive this? I don't know. I don't know. I actually saw a thing that said that the person throwing out the Anna de Armas poster was Casey Affleck. I also saw that, yes. But but I'm like, how can you tell? Because of the mask and everything. He was in like a hazmat suit, it looked like. Yeah, he he really did. He looked like he was doing work on the house or something. (laughs) (laughs) Casey's had it a little rough. You know what I mean? He's got to be Ben's general contractor now as well. Okay, so I have some some Ben Affleck um, content. So when I was like young maybe middle school or or even younger, I watched the movie Pearl Harbor a lot because it was very, it was a very sexually charged movie for me. It was two VHS tapes and it was like Ben Affleck, Kate Beckinsale and Josh Hartnett. And I was just young and confused and I was attracted to girls and boys. And so I just watched this movie a lot because all the girls and boys in this movie were very good looking. You got two mm-hmm. good junior in this movie. Like it's, you know, there's a lot going on. So I would kind of just think in my head, like, okay, like probably definitely Ben Affleck will take my virginity someday. And so, and that'll, that'll be great. And <laughs> which Ben Affleck, by the way, is 18 years older than me, which is, you and, know, totally fine. Yes. And Cassandra has remained pure for him. Yeah, I'm waiting for him still. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I wanted him to be my first, even still. And so I was watching behind the scenes, like, because, you know, like cable TV used to just have like on MTV, they would be like, here's behind the scenes of fucking whatever. So the behind the scenes footage of like the the filming of Daredevil, which uh, starred Ben Affleck and Jennifer Gardner. And Jennifer Gardner was doing behind the scenes interviews and she kept talking about how she didn't like Ben Affleck. And I wasn't like old and sophisticated enough to like understand like flirty sarcasm. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> is she seriously just talking shit? about Ben Affleck right now on TV. <laughs> my my bae, Ben Affleck. And and then when they like got together and got married, I was like, she hated him. What the fuck? And <laughs> just kind of like I I get it now. Uh, if I could rewatch that interview, I would, because I probably would be like, it's so obvious. I always had in the back of my head that she hated him and like really didn't like him, but that they got together anyways. And so I had to lose my virginity to some guy named David. God. Yeah. Bless it. your heart. <laughs> Bless your confused little heart. It was awful. It was so bad. Well, you know what else is so bad? Mm. Yeah. So according to ESPN.com, the New York Mets GM Jared Porter acknowledges that he's sending explicit images to a female reporter when he worked for the Chicago Cubs. The New York Mets general manager Jared Porter sent explicit, unsolicited texts and images to a female reporter in 2006, culminating with a picture of an erect, naked penis, according to a copy of the text history attained by ESPN. ESPN putting in some investigative journalism. I also just love that, like, at the end of the day, like, you can't just say dick pic. Like, you got to, like, you got to use the real, like, courtroom terminology. Uh, what was the, what was the picture? It was an erect, naked penis. Unsolicited. No further questions. <laughs> I rest my case. (laughs) So the woman, a foreign correspondent who moved to the United States to cover Major League Baseball, which I love that life story, said at one point that she ignored more than 60 messages from Porter before he sent the final lewd photo. The text relationship started casually before Porter, then at the Chicago Cubs, director of professional scouting, began complimenting her appearance, inviting her to meet him in various cities and asking why she was ignoring him. And the text show that she had stopped responding to Porter after he sent a photo of pants featuring a bulge in the groin area. Again, wonderful courtroom talk. When reached by ESPN on Monday evening, Porter acknowledged texting with the woman. He initially said he had not sent any pictures of himself. When he, when told the exchanges show that he had sent selfies and other pictures, he said that the more explicit ones are not me. Those are like kind of joke stock images. 
Yeah, because when you're Googling. Sure, buddy. A Googling photo of pants featuring bulge and groin area stock photos. (laughs) On Tuesday morning, the Mets fired Porter, according to a tweet from owner Steve Cohen. In my initial press conference, I spoke about the importance of integrity, and I meant it, he tweeted. There should be zero tolerance for this type of behavior. Get it, Steve Cohen. You did it. Go Mets. Go Mets. That's a stand for women everywhere. Yeah. So Porter texted again the next day, according to the messages. This is Ice Boom the next day after the bulge in the pants photo. And attempts by both to set up a meeting fell through. And then he reached out to her again, acquiring to her whereabouts saying, why aren't we hanging out? And then Porter asked whether the woman remembered what he looked like and said, you're so pretty. Do you have a boyfriend yet? And then he sent a selfie and said, it can be me. I like, I tense up reading these. I, the secondhand shame and embarrassment is just reeking through. Yeah. In her home country, the woman told ESPN, it's very common for friends of the opposite sex to send each other photos. I didn't think much of it. After she sent a selfie, Porter responded, you're gorgeous. Want more of me? She said yes, explaining to ESPN. I thought it would be awkward to say no. I didn't think of where it would progress. So here's the thing. Is that like whatever she says here, fine. Like if she thinks, oh, I mean, in my country, it's not weird to send pictures and I didn't know what he was trying to say and blah, blah, blah. Even if you did know what he was trying to say, like whenever you decide to stop texting, that doesn't, that's not a cue from the other person to send 60 more text messages. Like even if you're texting with someone, and it's getting hot and bothered and it's getting sexy. If the other person goes away, like for any fucking reason, you don't get to send 60 text messages and then a, and, and then a n- erect naked penis. This has been text etiquette with Cassandra and Erica. Well, because, you know, like it's kind of annoying. Like I'm reading like, again, good for ESPN. They're really doing journalism stuff. Like I get it. Journalist to journalist. I get it. But like. I just like, I think it's kind of annoying that they're like, well, did you prompt this at all? And like, she has to explain like, in my country, that's like, who gives a fuck? If it's 60 text messages in a row, no one's asking for that. Yep. 62 unanswered texts and seven including photos were sent between July 19th and August 10th. Like, no, that's like a month of just silence where this person's obsessively sending stuff. It's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, once she realized that it was sexual in nature, she resolved to cut off all communications. Yeah, she doesn't need to explain up to that point why she didn't get that it was sexual in nature. And again, even if she knew it was sexual in nature and then she made the decision that she didn't want to do it anymore, then that's it. And you know what, boys, you have that same option. You can definitely decide at one point or, you know, like anyone who's texting anyone, you can decide, I don't want to do this anymore. And then yeah. shut it down. And then yep. if you get shut down like that, I'm sorry. I get it. I've been there. Don't send 60 text messages. That is a 5150 automatically. Yeah. He said his first unanswered text where he said that he was not married, he followed up with, which picture do you like the most? Want to see more dot, 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 question mark? And then question mark, question mark. Five hours later, hello, beautiful. 90 minutes later, is that too much for you? Two hours later, where did you go? Three hours later at 2 or 3 a.m. I'm bored. Like, And they oh. just go on from there. It's, it, this is, it's fucking psycho. So, yeah, I, uh, good, on, good on the Mets for firing this guy. Yeah. Because think about it the other way around is that like maybe before, like if people are like, oh, you shouldn't be fired for your job for how you act outside of your job or whatever like that. It's like he was obviously making her uncomfortable. And if she's here to cover Major League Baseball, how is she supposed to cover the Mets if the guy who's the GM of the Mets makes her feel uncomfortable? Like it's going to result in her quitting her job Mm -hmm. rather than him losing his job for being the problem. So fuck yes. We love it. We We love love to see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I don't love to see? Oh boy, is it our next story? Yeah. So according to metro.co.uk... Oh, and this is sent in by a listener. By when Erica tried to be daddy, sent in by Brant Kale. What? When I tried to pull out all the stops and pay with a fancy meal with my meal plan in college. That's who sent this in? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Thanks. Oh, and it's a love story. (laughs) An influencer who is 35 gave birth to her 21-year-old stepson's baby. What? A Russian influencer who married her former stepson has given birth to their first baby. 
Marina Balmashevay, mm-hmm. 35, was once stepmother to her now husband, Vladimir Shavirin, 21. <laughs> his wife, there's no way his last name is Shavirin. S H A V Y R I N. Shavirin? No, nah, fuck it. Just call him Shavirin. This is a weird story. <laughs> She helped raise him from the time he was seven years old after marrying Vladimir's father, Alexei, 45, who she was with for almost 10 years. Oh, wow. She really fostered the baby shave urine into an adult shave urine. Oh, this just gives me the freaking heebie-jeebies. So Alexei, who now cares for their five adopted children, has accused Marina of seducing his son when he came home on holiday from university. While the couple welcomed a baby girl with Vladimir requesting their daughter's face not to appear on social media. Uh, The pair has has yet to name the girl with Marina saying, dad does not want to show our daughter yet. The fuck does that have to do with her name? Uh, I mean, bless this child's heart and may it never be featured on social media. Yeah. Baby shave you're in. (laughs) Oh my God. The pair's relationship was first plunged into the limelight when a throwback snap shared by Marina of herself at 22 Posing with then seven-year-old Vladimir went viral. I mean, that's essentially like me and Ben Affleck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know what? When it's presented to me in this way, it is creepy. So I'm glad that didn't happen. I, I, yeah, my plans, better, better laid plans for losing my virginity for sure. Yeah. Had so many plans, had songs planned. And then it was like the most disappointing evening of my life. <laughs> Like songs, like multiple. Yeah, I thought we would go for songs long. That's your first mistake. <laughs> You're like, wait, wait. I burned. I'm so fucking nervous. Wait, I burned a CD for this. I, I did have a mixtape plan. <laughs> I think that I was like, there was like a movie on in the background, and I don't remember what the movie was, but I'm. It like was about like, is it spurlunking? Where you like drop down into the center of the earth. Uh-huh. Like yeah. where you go cave, caving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what was the movie was about. Jesus. Well, what a metaphor. What an apt metaphor. <laughs> yeah. Going deeper into the cave. Not that deep. <laughs> Speaking of not that deep. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> On the eve of her father's ouster, Tiffany Trump has her most puzzling moment yet. Oh, according to Slate.com, uh, Tiffany Trump announced her engagement. Yay! On the night before her father was to leave office. <laughs> hey, Dad, I know you're pretty sad, but me and Michael are engaged. And he's like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, which one are you? The one with Marla? No, thank you. Yuck. <laughs> yeah. They say that Tiffany is the forgotten Trump child, the least Trumpy of the brood among the children, but Tiffany really doesn't get away with enough credit for the deep streak of Trumpishness that burns within her. For example, she chose the most deranged possible moment to announce her engagement on the very last day of her father's presidency. It couldn't have waited a week. I mean, you know, it's exciting when Michael Bulos, a a scion which I had to Google what that meant. And the scion means like air kind of person, rich person. I thought Mm. it was a car and it uh, it is also a car. I thought it was like a science fiction term for like a cyborg half human robot. You know, honestly, of all the Trump kids, I would think that she would be the one to go for the robot. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So he's like, um, they met at uh, Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club in Mykonos, Greece, which I love. That, shut the fuck up. That's not real. Yeah, it's 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 so fun. Um, <laughs> I guess that this has that it has been denied by a source that that is where they met, but Slate and Slate says that Slate says it's been denied by a source, but we're going to repeat it anyways because it's fun to think about. But yes, uh, uh, allegedly they met at uh, Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club in Mykonos. Did you watch that reality show, Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club? I didn't have cable when I needed fucking cable because no, and I I want I want it. I want to watch. Recap for those who don't know: 
they cast Americans who were like kings and queens of hospitality, you know, like flair bartenders and hostess at fancy clubs and things like that, brought them to Mykonos, made them live in a house, and then had to carry out every whim of Lindsay Lohan. I heard a story from one of the guys, Mike, who (laughs) worked there. He shared how chaotic everything was. One night, Lindsay, like, plucked him out of this house that they were all living in and was like, come with me. And so they went shopping at, like, midnight. And I guess everything was still open in Mykonos. And they're sitting there, and she's like, oh, my God, do you like these boots? And they were like, you know, $2,300 boots. And he's like, oh, my God, yeah. I like." He's like, I think I'm going to fuck Lindsay Lohan for some boots. And then she goes, you should buy them. And he's like, but you're not. You're not paying us. <laughs> oh, my God. And she got, like, mad at him for not buying these very expensive boots. It was it was a wild story. I saw Mike at a live show for another podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> I love that. Back to, back to the story. I, the chaos that was Lindsay Lohan's beach, beach show was, I mean, it was on MTV. It was messy. It was poorly edited. <laughs> There was no, like, through story. It was just insanity. I like that you said back to the story, and then you kept talking about Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club and not about Tiffany Trump. But honestly, like, what an excellent, like, <laughs> like that's what everybody does. <laughs> Nobody oh. talks about Tiffany Trump. Yeah, she's just so boring. She's a fucking, she's a little bit of a weird beard. That's That's for sure. But you know what? I, if she's in love, I don't care. I mean, I just... I just don't care. Yeah. I don't care about this family. Although her betrothed, Michael Bulos, does have a brother who's a rapper who goes by Farastafari. Oh. Oh. So you're telling me there's a chance that I I could be a part of this family? Yes. That is exactly what I'm telling you. It's You'd be like the, the what the fuck is that bitch's name? Who's not, he's, she's like... Married or in in with another Tiffany Gilfoyle? No, no, no. The other one who's Carly Kloss and how she's like kind of in with the Kushners. Uh huh. Who are in with the Trumps? Yeah. So if you got with Farastafari, you would be in with the Buloses, who are kind of in with the Trumps. Not worth it. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that Trump cares, or if he does care, he sure as fuck can't tweet about it. <laughs> Bitch. Bitch. You know who else just didn't seem to care? Oh, yeah. According to the NewYorkPost.com, a couple arrested after allegedly filming themselves having sex on a Ferris wheel. Like you do. Uh, Nice use of allegedly. Thank you. A a couple from South Carolina allegedly had sex on a Ferris wheel and were arrested after police found a recording of the wild ride on a porn site. I mean, why else would you... Have sex on a Ferris wheel if you were going to record it and put it on a porn site. Eric and Lori Harmon, both 36, went for quite a spin while riding a glass gondola 187 feet in the air on the sky wheel in Myrtle Beach, according to Myrtle Beach Sun News. Police said they found the video of early January romp on a popular porn site. Now, who found it? Is it... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is it... Is it police's job to... Like always go, uh, this is probably true, but like there's got to be like some police that their job is to go through point starts. But is it also possible that just like one cop came in one day and said, <sighs> an anonymous source told me um, <laughs> that there's a video of people having sex on the sky wheel, uh, which happens to be this jurisdiction. So I felt compelled to share. Uh, Larry, uh, uh, Larry, who is this source? Uh, it's for the for the protection of the source. Uh, they I have to keep them anonymous. <laughs> But just trust me. Here's the if video go- on my phone. <laughs> yeah. If you Google the right terms, you can find a lot of crimes. Yeah, that's uh, that is a scary but true thing. So there's other clips of the this couple having sex in public. There's one in a community pool in Horry County. And then there was another incident where Lori Harmon was accused of urinating on two vending machines. The frisky pair were arrested last Saturday and each charged with indecent exposure and participation in preparation of obscene material. Lori was also charged with a malicious injury to personal property. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
I'm imagining that this is how the Harmons make their income, but ideally you don't you don't have sex in public. I understand the thrill of oh my goodness, we're almost caught. I can understand the thrill, but to follow through, I I cannot. I cannot also, like, just empathize even, with these. You people. know, like they can Hollywood magic, baby. You can you can fake that shit. You know? Set up a set. Something. I don't Hollywood know. magic. For their at home porn. I don't know if they have the budget for it. I'm just saying that, like, you know, find another niche that you can do legally and leave it to the experts to stage the almost getting hot caught sex in public. Mm-hmm. You know? I agree. Speaking of being out in public. Mm. According to Consequence of Sound, Erica's favorite website, Joe Rogan says Grimes didn't give COVID-19 to Dave Chappelle, which is a headline that is uh, fucking confusing. (laughs) First off, epidemiologist Joe Rogan. God, I know. Jesus, fuck. He's Uh, practically Dr. Fauci. Yeah. um, So Chappelle tested positive for the coronavirus on Thursday. And, you know, I hope that he's okay. Um, I wish he would stop saying fucked up shit about trans people, but we do wish him a recovery. Yeah, him and Ricky Gervais should have a conversation. The veteran comedian was in the middle of a multi-night residency at Austin concert venue Stubbs, where he was co-lighting, co-headlining with Joe Rogan. Am I crazy? Like, what? How? Is there live comedy again? Where the fuck have I been? Chappelle has been performing live comedy in Ohio and other places Throughout the pandemic. With masks on, though, right? I saw his thing on Dave, that David Letterman Netflix show and everyone had masks on. So I imagine that that's happening. But I don't know, like for some reason, I don't know. I've seen like Whitney Cummings do a lot of stand up on her Instagram, too. And she's performing a lot. And I'm kind of like, I, uh, how do you enforce the masks? Whatever. That's not what this is about. Who cares? During a gig earlier in the week, Chappelle and Rogan were photographed maskless with Elon Musk and Grimes. As Grimes herself had tested positive for COVID-19 earlier this month, some speculated that she was the one who transmitted the virus to Chappelle. But in a statement to TMZ, Rogan said that was not the case. The person that gave COVID to Dave was not Elon's partner, Grimes. Honestly, like, I get TMZ and NPR confused sometimes, so that's probably true. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. They wouldn't report that if it wasn't true. I mean, how could they? It's It's the source of, it's the word of God, practically. It's TMZ. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Unless Rogan suddenly became a health department official with an expertise in contact tracing and forgot to tell anyone, it's not entirely clear how the professional podcaster can give definitively say who gave COVID to who. Grimes announced her positive diagnosis in an Instagram story on January 9th, writing, finally got COVID, but weirdly enjoying the Dayquil fever dream. 2021, finally got COVID. I have not been treating getting COVID-19 as an inevitability. No, 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 no. I think that's the um, mistake that, that people are making. I agree. I agree. Again, I am not an epidemiologist. Mm-mm. I am not a professional healthcare, but I think you should not be in the, well, I'm ready to receive stance for COVID. No. Or like, you know, everyone's going to get it. So it's like, no, actually, not everyone has we, to get it. If everyone yeah. got it, we would be we would lose millions and millions of people's lives. So let's change that finally into a unfortunately got COVID. I mean, that's just Grimes, though, man. I know she's a fucking weirdo, but like that, just like she's got a big platform. Like fucking get a life. She uh, she's got some bops though. I do enjoy Art Angel and like some of her other albums. That is uh, the fucking truth. And also, you know, we walk a thin line trying to say anything about Joe Rogan. Well, you know, I don't think podcasters are allowed to utter his name at least not three times in a row or he'll show up. So Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan. No, no, no. He's here. I just got I just got lured into watching an MMA fight. I got to go. Help me. I'm in, I'm in a sense deprivation tank. <laughs> I'm doing DMT right now. Fuck. Oh my god, Trashy Trashy's gonna be four hours long. <laughs> mm. Sorry. It's fun though. You know, it's for fun. It's for fun. 
good on him for having a platform that he can give monsters. I mean, how soon until Trump goes on Joe Rogan? I don't know, but Joe Rogan seems like the kind of person who would interview him. I don't think Joe Rogan is a bad person. I think that he's just... He's just kind of a douchebag. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good term. He's kind of a douchebag. So, you know who else is a fucking douchebag? The CEO of MyPillow, Mike Lindell. Yeah, he's a fucking huge douchebag. According to Yahoo.com, Jane Krasow... Jane... Oh... Jane Krakowski, I love her. I don't know why I don't know how to say her last name. Jane Krakowski denies a relationship with MyPillow CEO Mike Lindell, romantic or otherwise. A report in the Daily Mail tabloid circulated Thursday saying that 30 Rock will unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Allie McBeal actress 52 was in a nine-month relationship with Mike Lindell, CEO of the pillow company and the White House guest of former President Donald Trump. However, a spokesperson for the star denied the report with a humorous statement. Jane has never met Mr. Lindell. She has not been in any relationship with him, romantic or otherwise. She is, however, in a full-fledged fantasy relationship with Brad Pitt, Reggie Jean Page, and Kermit the Frog, and welcomes any and all coverage on those. I mean, king of all kings, Kermit the Frog. Yeah, yeah. Frogs. Worships a full-figure lady. Also, Reggie Jean Page, am I saying his name right? <laughs> You've come to the wrong person to ask for correct names. <laughs> Wait, Reggae Jean Page. Either way, he's the star of Bridgerton and he is fucking sexy. Fine. He is sexy. He is so attractive. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. So according to Daily Mail, the Krakowski and Lindell met at a studio about eight years ago, which is around the time that 30 Rock rapped, and they were friends until a year ago when sources claimed things turned romantic after one year of Minnesota-based Lindell trying to woo her by showering her with gifts of champagne and flowers. The relationship between the unlikely pair was a, quote, open secret in the New York City's West Village, where she lives and they were seen, reports claim. However, after nine months of quarantine dating, they split at the end of the summer after a weekend apparently gone wrong while staying in, staying in her Hamptons beach house. She then started dating someone else. Despite sources detailing the passionate romance, Krakowski, mom to nine-year-old son with ex-fiance Robert Godley, denied to the tabloid that she even knew the businessman, saying, point blank, I've never met the man. And then Lindell denied the romance, sinking it a step further, saying, I've never even heard of Jane Krakowski. Ooh. Oh, the shade. I mean, but if it's true, then like, or rather, if it's true that they've never met, then like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, New York Post, page six, reports it heard rumors about Krakowski and Lindell in November, but a friend of the actress called it a silly rumor. Such a weird, random, like, thing. By the way, just like for everyone who's curious, because Lindell's a huge Trump person, it's important to know that major retails like Bed Bath & Beyond and Kohl's dropped his products. However, they say that it's because they don't sell good, not because of his political be- beliefs. But either way, I'm glad it happened. Yes, I am. Are you ready? Oh, I'm freaking ready. Okay. Well, let's fucking do it. It's time for the dumpster fire of the week. <laughs> You're fired. So we're pulling from a couple websites here, but we would like to talk about the Trump pardons. Mm. Or lack thereof. Yes. So Donald Trump, he pardoned Little Wayne, most likely after seeing Erica's t-shirt business. Yes. My free wheezy business is still alive and well. Mm -hmm. The veteran rapper had been facing a 10-year prison sentence for federal weapons charge. Is that a different weapons charge than he actually went to jail for before? I believe that's the very same one. Uh, yeah, it's a different weapons charge from when he was in jail 13, 12 years ago. Mm, so he didn't learn his lesson. This is a <laughs> little Wayne cannot be taught. You know, and you know what? The prison isn't the way to do it anyway. Yeah, so they met for like a photo op or something, Trump and Lil Wayne. And then that's when Lil Wayne publicly endorsed him, praised him for his supposed progress with criminal justice reform initiatives. And I imagine that that's when it came up that Donald Trump would pardon him. I mean, any press is good press, I guess. It was a weird move by Lil Wayne, but he it's not like he was the only rapper who was like just deciding to fucking go for Trump. Oh, and you know what? I said multiple websites. These are both consequence of sound websites, which is shocking because neither of us like that website. Oh, wait, it's Erica's favorite. <laughs> 
side. <laughs> a full list of Donald Trump's last minute pardons and commuted sentences is available on NBCNews.com. But some of the highlights from those would be Kodak Black, Desiree Perez, who was arrested in 1994 for drug possession. And in 2019, she was named CEO of Rock Nation, the entertainment company founded by rapper turned mogul Jay-Z. Mm, Roger Stone. Roger Stone was was uh, pardoned. Steve Bannon was pardoned. And you know who wasn't pardoned? Oh, who? You know who was ready and had a limo to pick him up from prison? Oh, no. And he didn't get pardoned. Who? Joe Exotic, the Tiger King himself. Oh, good. Trump did one thing correct. With his final hours as one of the most demonstrably worst leaders in the country's history, Donald Trump issued 143 pardons and commutations. Commutations? Commutation. I don't even know what the fuck a commutation is, but a commutation definition is the action or process of commuting a judicial sentence. So I imagine that means get, oh, oh, it means that your felonies get turned into misdemeanors. Mm, See, that's some good ass journalism we just did. That's some good ass journalism. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you hmm? see the Tiger King limo? Yeah, I did. It was pathetic. It was like a an extended cab truck limo. Yeah. We'll post a photo on our social media. Yeah. So despite months of pleading and lobbying and even hiring the limo to pick him up, Joe Exotic of Netflix Tire Kings did not make the cut. Man, 143 pardons and you couldn't get on that list. <laughs> the man born um, Joseph Allen Maldonado Passage is in the midst of a 22-year-long sentence for participating in the murder for hire plot to kill Carol Baskins, the rival owner of Big Cat Rescue in Tampa. Not only did the scheme fail, but in a turn of fate, Baskins has since been granted ownership of Exotic's former zoo. So That I did not know. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, Baskins got it all. Well, I mean, she because she sued him for a bunch of shit and like he didn't have anything to give her. So she came for everything. And I don't really blame her because he literally would f- fucking create YouTube videos about wanting to stab her and punch her in the face. Man, I had problems with Tiger King. Not the docu-series, but like people's reaction to it. Like everyone hated Carol Baskin, which yeah, like she probably killed her husband, but not enough was said about like the like insane, like toxic abuse. Joe Exotic deserves to be in jail for as long as he is in jail for. Like he threatened to kill this woman who was his competitor. He, you know, kept young men addicted to drugs in order to, you know, have them be his like husbands or whatever, like men that claimed later that they weren't gay, which maybe they were bisexual or something, but like they were being kept addicted to drugs, Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, the the influence was, was heavy. Yeah. He would like had this like weird animal zoo with tigers that like weren't, being cared for properly. He fed humans like expired Walmart meat. I mean, fuck this guy. I literally, he became a cult celebrity because of the Tiger King series. And like, it definitely was crazy to watch, but like anyone who's like, oh, like finds him like somewhat amusing and doesn't also like simultaneously think about what a shitty person he is. You got to. He did not deserve to get out of jail. No, neither did Roger Stone, but... Oh, my God. Holy fucking shit. He is not the worst of all the people that Trump, you know, was looking at pardoning or did pardon. Trust me. I would... <laughs> I I don't think either of them deserve a pardon, but, like, I really don't fucking like Joe Exotic. I... I'm so conflicted. I I hate... I hate Joe Exotic. Everything you said is correct. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, he's just a good old boy. You love like, mess. <laughs> I love mess. I love mess. And there's that little part of me that's like, well, he didn't do anything that bad. Yes, <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. He fully did. He deserves to be in jail. You should never threaten another human being's life. You should never mistreat people. You should never, you know, influence people with drugs. And I mean, I, I get it. I'm on your side. <laughs> but there's but like a part mess. of me. That loves mess. You know what? That's that's what people come for. They come for, you know, you and I having different opinions. Isn't that what America is? I mean, honestly, we're patriots. Yeah. We yeah. But not like not like the scary kind that aren't actually patriots. We're like real patriots. 
Yeah, uh, I'm upset that the don't thre- uh, don't tread on me flag has been co-opted. Daddy hats are no longer allowed. Neither is the don't tread on me flag. Wait, what? Taken Daddy so hats many- aren't allowed? Yes, because of the. Did you not see the interview with Gail King? No. Okay, so there was a woman. Her name escapes me, but she <laughs> accused a child and accosted a child of stealing her cell phone in New York City, and it was caught oh, on camera. Oh, that stupid bitch. Oh, yeah, and then she wore the daddy hat. And then she wore a daddy hat on her interview with Gail King, which is absurd. And now daddy has been taken from us. Fuck. Fuck her. You can't let these people win. I'm, I can't wear my daddy hat in good faith anymore. I have that hat. I almost bought that hat. Because we're daddy, Cass. We're daddy. We're fucking daddies. We're daddies. Your daddies love you, trash cans. Your daddies love you. Cass? What's up? Are you hoarding anything this week? I am. Well, it costs nineteen ninety nine to rent on Amazon or YouTube. <gasps> Say it. Say oh. it. <laughs> I believe that it is worth your time and money to watch Promising Young Woman. I watched it last night. It's good, right? It's so good. I have notes, but you know what? It doesn't even fucking matter because it was awesome. And you should definitely, definitely watch it. When was the last time you paid full price for a movie? You know, like, is it jarring to see $19.99 when you're used to only things costing four bucks to rent? Yes. But like, it's a female director and like, just support it because it's fucking awesome. And it's just, yeah, it's a good movie. I don't want to spoil a thing about it. Just watch it. I had like a sense of dread through most of the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is so the visceral senses that I had watching this movie. Oh, it's so good. I felt like excited watching it. Winston and I just kept looking at each other and being like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was good. It's really, it's good. And there's like some funny moments and yeah, yeah. You should just listeners, you got to take my word for this one and take Erica's word for this one. What Mm -hmm. do you? What are you hoarding? I am hoarding Search Party Season 4. Everyone's been watching that. It's so good. Okay. So if you haven't watched Search Party, the first season deals with Dory, the the main character, having uh, found a missing persons poster of somebody she went to college with. And she kind of becomes like fixated on finding this person, but while her relationships kind of crumble around her and she's a complete narcissist and it is beautiful. And each season kind of progresses Chantal Witherbottom, the missing person. It like, it's just so good. And the season starts out with such a bang. There's a three-way kiss with Mm. John early and two Mm. other characters. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm. I just want to press my lips together. It's so, it's so good. Fun. Okay. Yeah, I got to watch that one because everyone's been talking about it. Mm-hmm. I watched the first like half of the first season on a plane once. Uh huh. And I was like, this is pretty good. I, I need to go home and finish this. And then I just, it wasn't available to me. So, but it's on HBO Max right now, yes. if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, great. Watch that. What are you throwing out? Anything? I am throwing out unnecessary trips. Okay. We are in a global pandemic. Mm. We are in LA experiencing one in three persons tested are testing positive for Corona. Scary. And I think that doing your part and staying inside and wearing a mask is the least you can do. Yeah. I'm throwing away unnecessary trips. Bye. I'm, Get out. I'm also throwing away Instacart. This just came to me. Instacart has been union busting mm. and is Firing employees that have decided to unionize because of their horrific practices. Mm. And so I went into the app. I had them delete all of my data and delete my account. But I told the customer representative exactly why I was busting up Instacart while I was, you know, deleting my account. So let them know that you are a user and stop using them. They are abusive to workers Prop 22 was the worst thing that could have happened for labor laws in California. Delete Instacart. Do not support them. Yeah. Good for you, Erica. 
Yeah. What are you throwing away? I'm going to throw out driving too fucking fast on the freeway when it's raining. Uh Uh-huh. Knock it off. That's dangerous. You stupid idiots. People in LA do not handle rain well. And I know it's a joke to everyone, but it's fucking real and it sucks. And honestly, slow down, you stupid dick. Why do you pay such high insurance for such fancy cars if you're going to drive like an asshole? I've like people who drive luxury vehicles are the, the worst offenders of this. Mm-hmm. Slow mm-hmm. down. Slow down. Slow down. You hear me? Also, Slow the fuck down. It's it's just dangerous. <laughs> this is your mother calling, and it is too dangerous. <laughs> Don't make me ask your father. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Where can the people find you, Cass? At Cass Cardenas on Instagram and Twitter, and every Tuesday night on the Nooner Podcast on the Smodcast Network. What about you, Erica? You can find me at, at Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram. And you can find this podcast at Trashy Trashy Pod on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can always email us at Trashy Trashy Podcast at gmail.com and tell us why you're trash. Please do. We love it. And we love when you send us stories. And um, we love you, little trash cans. We love you. Hey, Cass. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, my friend. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.